Teachers, when did karmic justice finally come to that one troublesome student? I interned in a class with this kid who always thought he was smarter than everyone else. He was pretty smart. But not by too much. He always got paired with kids not as smart as him. So he would always be really smug when dealing with them. We learned he got that from his parents. During a parent-teacher conference. His parents praised that boy up and down and thought he was the smartest kid in the school. They built him up as that and they got him thinking that too. Then they went off on my mentor teacher. She wasn't providing him with higher enough education. She was bringing him down. She was terrible. The conference ended when my mentor teacher left the room crying after the verbal lashing. Well about a week later. There was an event where parents came to watch their children in class. It was to watch them do math games with other students. Well my mentor teacher paired this smug little bastard with the actual smartest kid in class. The one who was working on more advanced classes after school. The kid got shamed. His parents were so flustered during the event. They were very visibly nervous and upset looking as this kid got destroyed game after game. They left before it was all done and took him out of school for the rest of the day. Not a teacher. But one time when I was in kindergarten. A kid looked me straight in the eyes. Bit himself on the wrist, hard, and ran to the teacher and blamed me. That little cunt. They sent me to the principal's office. My mom was called down. I got yelled at and cried. A week later. The kid did it again. And the teacher saw him do it. Felt so good to have the principal apologizing profusely to me. While that little it had got a mouthful from his parents. I coached middle school football. Some kids have come out of their shell by then. Others have not. But at least most of the early bloomers were jerks to make life hell for everybody. The team starting halfback was one of those jerks. He gave a defensive lineman hell and since everybody thought he was cool they gave him hell right along with him. The D lineman was a big guy but not aggressive or outgoing. Still just in his shell really. He did fine out there because he was a big guy but hardly played to his potential. The little running backs took their Napoleon complexes out on the big guy by running by him and shouting pass. Every time he failed to stop them. Rather than fight back to make the play he would just ignore it and line up and try again the next play. One day the whole thing just clicked for the big guy and he started making plays. He learned to get off his blokers and form tackle and attack the ball carrier. It was a cool thing to see. He loved it. When he really started getting into a grove I started running the jerk half back right at the blooming D lineman and watched him plant that guy in the ground with a thud every time. It was just getting easier as I made sure they ran the same play at him play after play. Soon. Bruised and beaten. The jerk halfback asked how many times are you going to run this play? And I responded once for every time you called him a pass. I had a student that was a real twerp. Always doing things he was not supposed to and purposely causing conflict with other students. He was a daily headache. One day in class he stole a candied pepper from one of Hispanic students and ate it. It was a very hot pepper, not sure of the type. At first I didn't notice cause he is a sneaky kid. He started to sweat and his sweat turned to tears. I need to go to the bathroom, he cried. My mouth. My mouth. I went to investigate and found out what happened. The karma payback plan was now collecting. And I refused to let him go get a drink and continued with the math instruction in hopes of teaching him a lesson. For the next few minutes he pleaded with me to go to the nurse with tears running down his face. I said I do not negotiate with thieves. He started running around in circles. It wasn't until he started sobbing and crying out I just want my mom. That I finally felt bad and said, if I take you to the nurse are you ever going to act out in class again? He promised that he wouldn't. And he never did. The tears and sobbing in front of his peers broke his ego and he was a stellar student for the rest of the school year. I teach middle school. Had a kid that threw a lock at my head not get expelled because it just slipped out of her hand. She got expelled a few months later for bringing a weapon to school. Last year had a 7 year old in my class who was just a pain. He's the only child I've ever taught who I've actually disliked. 
He would throw things around the classroom. Pinch other children. Stab them with pencils. He was rude to everyone and would always blame it on someone else. Talking to his parents wouldn't help because they believed everything he said. Even over adults who had actually witnessed him doing it. They would give excuses and say that other children were blaming him or that he was being picked on. There was nothing wrong with this child other than he had been brought up with no consequences in his life. Anyway. One break time he was harassing another child and I guess they just had enough and this usually mild-mannered child just punched him in the stomach causing the horrible child to wet himself. When following the indecent up all of the other children who witnessed it, around 5 or 6, completely closed ranks and denied that it ever happened. I can't usually condone when children hit back, it causes so many other problems, but you better believe all the adults that have had to deal with this child were rooting for the hitter. When I was younger the teacher got tired of the kid who kept disrupting the class and she gave extra homework to everyone in the class except the troublesome kid and made all the student write thanks for the extra homework. Name. Somehow he stopped believing he was cool after that. Straight from the drill sergeant's playbook. That one. Yep. Stop the trouble student by peer pressure and stop the class from encouraging his antics. Didn't like it at the time but was effective as hell. In high school we had this little it kid named Brandon. I only had one class with him but that class is where the story happened. It was 11th grade geography. And our teacher was one of the nicer teachers I can remember. Brandon would always push her buttons like I'm sure he did to everyone. He would never take it too far. I think he just loved the attention of getting the whole class to look at him or laugh at what he was doing. He would make little noises. Tell stupid jokes during lecture. Pretend to sleep and snore. And any other stupid irritating it that you could think of. Our teacher. She was quite a patient lady but you could tell by mid-year that she had enough of his it as anyone. She couldn't even really punish him because Brandon loved that kind of attention and it made him all the happier. The few times he got too much. She would give him detention and a couple times sent him to the office which just made him more giddy, we had a very tame office staff and they would keep him in the office for an hour or something and just let him out. She tried everything and you could tell she was at the end of her wits. A few weeks after 9 stroke 11. Some kid thought it would be funny to call in a bomb threat. They cleared the school and went locker by locker. They found nothing of course. And we went back in. As soon as we sat down in that geography class. An office staff member came into our class and went up to our teacher and whispered something into her ear. I still remember the calm look on her face. In the most professional way. She looked over at Brandon and said. You're being called to the office. She went on with the rest of the class completely normal. They had found quite a bit of weed in Brandon's locker and as a result he was expelled over it. I was in pre-k in the early 80s at a private catholic school. This one kid, Amy, would always bite the other kids. I don't remember exactly how it went down but I guess one day I came home crying or had a really bad bite mark or something and my mom was pissed. She took me straight to the superintendent, not the principal, and showed her what happened. The superintendent, a really old nun, did not put up with that it. She called Amy into her office and bit the duck out of her arm. Amy started crying but she never bit anyone again. Old nuns in the 80s were hardcore. Note, I am not saying what happened was right. Just that it happened. I teach college students to be teachers. My first year doing this. I had a student who was always late. Turned in the bare minimum of work. Always had excuses. I told him he had to improve because if he did this on the job. He'd get fired. He kept coasting and the other profs let him get by. First teaching job. He got fired. I laughed, in the privacy of my office, and I'm not sorry. Not teacher but I'll tell you a story anyway. There was this guy in middle school that would take it and piss in the hallways really weird but he somehow thought it was funny so he kept doing it. Well I was locker buddies with this really early developed guy in middle school. He was like Hagrid big to me back then. I noticed the weird kid standing next to my locker but standing in front of Hagrid's locker. I'm thinking oh it's something's about to go down so I waited. 
Hagrid gets to his locker and this kid was still standing in front of his locker. Hagrid tells him to please move out of the way because he was blocking the way. Weird kid says no and starts chuckling. All I'm thinking is oh it oh it. Hagrid asks again and still the same response. This is when Hagrid ducking kicks this mf in the face. Like I've never seen anything like this before. This kid is standing straight up and he lifed his leg higher than I am in height and kicked to this kid in the face. Hagrid gets suspended and tells me if that kid ever bothers me to let him know so he can kick him in the face again. Freshman English. Busted a kid for plagiarism. He was furious and refused to drop the course. I gave him a second chance. And he continued to plagiarize. He was a slimy. Smarmy kid who thought I was just a dumb. Clueless TA. But jokes on him he ended up failing the course three ways. Plagiarizing. Exceeding absences. And failing to turn in a complete final. You can argue about one way to get an F. You can't argue about three. I teach kindergarten. And I had a terrible. Terrible child in my class last year. He liked to pull his desk away from the girl sitting across from him so her pencils and crayons would go falling on the floor. Finally. One day she got fed up and slammed her desk back into his. Unfortunately for him. His fingers happened to be there. I had to resist the urge to be like that's what you get but instead I just reminded him that that's why I said not to move his desk away from the rest of the table and sent him to the nurse. Oh it I know how bad that hurts. Good for you for not punishing the girl for dishing out some karma. Me and the girl had a talk about being aware of your surroundings when moving the furniture. And she gave him a half hearted sorry. All that was needed. Had a student who would routinely get his cell phone out and wouldn't put it away when asked. Often left the room during class. Karmic justice. Failed the course. Teacher's assistant for anatomy. This one student had an ego so large it could barely fit into room. However. This individual was very intelligent and often scored near perfect on exams. They wanted to go to med school. What made this person troublesome? Every detail was a small battle they had to win. They would bring articles how one small minor detail was incorrectly taught. One point off on an exam was met with highlighted notes from the book. PowerPoint. And articles on how they were correct. Mind you. The score on the exam was 99%. Karma Justice. Did not get into medical school. One school emailed the pre-professional guidance counselor and told them how much of an ass this individual was during the interview. I used to get in trouble in my third grade a lot because I would lose my pencil in class. My teacher, Mrs. Hodges, must have thought I was a moron. One day, after yet another lost pencil, I glance over at little Miss Anita closing her pencil box and glimpse my pencil in there. I screamed bloody murder at her until my teacher came over to yell at me for disrupting class. I accused Anita. Who broke down crying and admitted it. Teacher took her out of class to deal with the situation. As far as I can tell Anita was not punished. But she never stole any of my pencils again. Capital I. However. Did not get an apology from either lady. I think Mrs. Hodges was pissed that she had one less reason to hate me. Looking back I think Anita was poor and therefore got a pass. A student would frequently verbally abuse me and I was really patient with him. He had some troubles with school in general. So I was just another cog. I still did my best to check in with him and help him out with homework. His parents weren't really responsive because he was a senior and could therefore make his own decisions. One day he flipped out at me and walked out of the classroom. I sincerely had no idea what I did. He'd gone straight to the dean and told her that I gave him a look. The dean knows who I am and what I'm like and what I've done for this student so she, as she told me later, told him to cut the bullet and be nice to me because I didn't deserve his abuse. He admitted to her that he just wanted to pick a fight and he was impressed at how cool I kept myself when he started yelling duck you at me in front of the class. He was nice to me for the rest of the trimester and passed the class with a D plus after having failed it the year prior. I was happy to see him at graduation. I guess my best revenge for this student's abuse was getting him to become a bit more grown up and civil. 
he deserved it. This douchey kid grabbed a girl's purse and started rifling through it one day. Then he started yelling that she had a knife in her bag. Trying to get her in trouble. I believe the sub said something along the lines of and that's why she has a knife and gave the kid detention. After that he stayed away from the poor girl. Our minister had a brat child. One day he kicked at the minister and the man grabbed the kicking foot and the kid fell on the other leg and broke it. When the minister told the congregation the story the whole church either laughed or clapped. He did start to parent better after that incident. Not a teacher but in third grade. There was this kid who nobody really liked because when he got in trouble. The whole class would get in trouble. I didn't like the kid. I thought he was annoying and I never really learned anything but to not misbehave because I could also get in trouble like him. Anyway. One day he started giving the other kids in the class one dollar bills to be friends with him. All of the boys were like hell yeah. I'll be your friend for one dollar. Capital I. On the other hand, thought too highly of myself and refused. Then, the teacher stormed into the room, looked straight at him and demanded that he gives back the money. Apparently, he stole it from the teacher. All of the boys who he gave the money to got detention. The kid got expelled. I was a camp counselor. And there was this kid who was so annoying and always tried to borrow money from other campers and not give it back. Eventually, None of the campers wanted to play with him, including his only friend at camp. They came to me and I had to tell him why his friend didn't want to play with him anymore. I encouraged him to stop scheming. He didn't learn. But I think social exclusion is enough of a punishment for him. I was teaching music. I had a flutist who was fantastic. He practiced 4 hours every day and wanted to be the next James Galway guy who does the fluty shire theme in the lord of the rings unfortunately he had an ego the size of texas he told the girl next to him who also wanted to be a professional flutist that she was abysmal and should just go kill herself he refused to audition for our local honor band which was part of his grade because he refused to lower himself to playing with such talentless musicians He would itch about my conducting in class when I wouldn't cue him because I was too busy cueing the low brass who needed help with their entrances. Akka teaching. He refused to play a theme from a popular video game at a concert. Something that we play to get people to attend because we need that money to keep the program going. It was apparently not artistic enough. Then he refused to show up to a concert because he was embarrassed to be seen performing with his high school band. So he failed band and I kicked that toxic little it out. But he was talented and he wanted to be a flutist. So he auditioned for Juliet and made it in. This ducker quits before the first semester is over because he believed he was more talented than his teachers. He earned a symphony gig in a very well known group thanks to a blind audition where he wasn't permitted to talk and reveal how much of a doucher bag he was. That lasted two weeks before he dissed the very famous conductors conducting and got his ass fired. His career is dead because he couldn't keep his ego in check. And I find it immensely satisfying. First grade here. Had a boy that would not stop hitting kids with basketballs. He'd run up and pop the ball right at students. Sometimes he'd toss it real fast. And say catch. But most often. He'd just throw it at children on the playground who were completely unaware. This kid seemed like he was trying to knock other children down. He'd laugh his ass off if he saw someone stumble. Or fall after they were hit by his basketball. After talking with his parents. We told them we'd be taking the gonads away from him until after spring break. To see if his behavior improved. As promised he was allowed to play basketball again after break. But we warned he'd better behave. It didn't take even 5 minutes before he stalked. And shot that Spalding special at this poor little girl. Knocking her down. She cried. And pointed at him. Mulch dangling from her hair. He's mean missus. Misty. I agreed. And told her he'd have the basket gunnards taken away for the rest of the school year. As I got up and walked his way. He started to bolt. He ran out of the playground. Past the sand pit. And onto the basketball court. He maintained eye contact with me. And before I could take another step. 
a stray ball from a fifth grade game hit the edge of the backboard. Bounced off. And hit that little id square in the face he went down like a sack of potatoes. Of course I ran over to him. And made sure he was okay, he may be acting like a little it. But he's still just a child, I called for the nurse since he was out cold. He woke up with me above him. And started crying saying he'd never do it again. Please, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I won't do it again. I'll have to wait and see this coming year if karma kicked his ass or not. Because he didn't want to pick up another basketball the rest of the school year.